Hi, it's Jay again. Uh, still learning or trying to learn how to use a new video cam and testing various lights and things. And I want to take a few minutes and talk about networks, specifically the genesis of networks and why they yield the results that they do. Now, when you start with a network, you begin with nodes, places, if you will. And I'll use the example of the history of humankind in talking about nodes and connectors, the other part of networks. Now, if we, the orange dots are nodes. And if we're thinking about early humanity, the, the nodes were bands of people. Enough who, you know, 30, 40 people that wouldn't outfish or outhunt or outgather the area. But because they didn't have communications, there was really no reason to hang out with other people. But once they did have communications, at first sign language, but then spoken language, all of a sudden connections made sense. Because if I had trading partners, I could take what's surplus to me and trade it for what's surplus to somebody else and we both win. So connections are more or less the defining characteristic of networks and they're, they're inevitable. I mean, this is just the way that networks work. Now, in times of scarcity, you end up with sort of super nodes, if you will. And the super nodes exercise control over the subsidiary nodes. And this is what we know as a hierarchy. And in humankind, hierarchies became more and more predominant as communications improved, as we had written language, and then, aha, the printing press. So the connections were rather dense, and this is the way the world worked, and government. I mean, we had czars and kings and dictators and things like that until some of the nodes began to have communications power of their own. As communications dropped, all of a sudden, all kinds of nodes could connect. It didn't have to be just the, the top guys and the super nodes. So you had super nodes appearing all over, and they started to connect with one another, and that's the part about networks subvert hierarchy because this is no longer a special spot when we can connect with each other. Now here are the implications of this and we're right in the throes of this now. I mean our hierarchies right now are being challenged because there are all these connections. So you hire somebody into the marketing shop and in a meeting they raise their hand, they go, well, hold it, this is the way the world's working. And the boss says, what? I haven't heard that from upstairs. He goes, no, 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 I'm in direct connection with the customers. They're my pals on Facebook or I am or Twitter or something. So is this leveling effect, is there more connections, but more connections? What happens when you have more connections? The more connections in your network, the faster it's cycle time, because you go a shorter distance to get somewhere. So you end up with, there's my eraser here, a consequence of this is that everything goes faster. Faster, 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 faster. Now, there's another consequence too, and of course now I'm talking more not just human culture, but I'm thinking specifically about business and the way that that's carried out. I could be talking about computing, or could be talking about learning, a whole bunch of other stuff, but in this case, business. It's not only faster, but because things are interconnected, I can no longer be a specialist. I can no longer be good in just one thing because other stuff's connected to it. So if I don't know what's happening in science, I may have something come out of left field. It really changes the way that I do things. So I, the information glut isn't just, oh, it's faster production of information. It's, oh, I've got all of these types of information that I've got to keep up with. Now, there's another trick that comes about when you have interconnections. 
and uh, sorry about this, but there's this echo chamber effect and things that move together and you end up with not the usual life of little swings and cycles, but big swings and cycles. I mean, volatility whew, goes through the roof when you've got networks that are densely interconnected and that's what we're seeing now. And the, the bottom line is things are unpredictable. And this is such a radical shift from our old way of thinking when the, uh, the watchmaker, the Newtonian universe had uh, an equal and opposite reaction for every action and you could sort of predict things, you know, you do this and you're gonna get this. Well, no longer, now you do this, you make it ah, ah, something that's totally off scale. So that's a little bit about what's going on with networks. And we're going to be in for some confusing times as we switch from the machine age to the era of networks. I've got more stuff on this on the web if you're interested.